Well, first we'll see how the mic is working. Okay. Good evening to all of you. I trust it's familiar to you that uh, sometimes the pastor leads us into the praying of the Lord's Prayer by saying, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Sound familiar? I don't know if you've thought about that as being a connection with the second word that Jesus speaks from the cross. The thief says to him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so that's where that comes from that we use in our liturgy. And that's also what we're going to be talking about tonight, how the second word from the cross fits together with Jesus teaching us to pray thy kingdom come. So may God bless us as we meditate on his word together tonight and receive the Lord's Supper. So let's turn now to our opening hymn, Jesus I Will Ponder Now.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Reading of the Passion History. Matthew 26, verses 30 through 56. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as my I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the prayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. 
and he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as me against a robber, with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we join with the whole Christian church on earth and confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, please open my ears to listen to your holy word. Please open my mind to understand it clearly. And please open my heart to believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear brothers and sisters, prayer is crucial, especially when Jesus is hanging on the cross and praying. And prayer is also crucial for us today. That's why Jesus has given us the Lord's Prayer. It's much more than a coincidence that Jesus' seven words from the cross match up so well with the seven petitions of the Lord's Prayer. Tonight, we consider Jesus' second word from the cross, which is not a prayer, but an answer to prayer in a double sense. Jesus answers the prayer of the penitent thief and the salvation of the penitent thief is also an answer to Jesus' prayer, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The penitent thief prays, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's a remarkable prayer when you consider the circumstances. What kind of kingdom does the penitent thief have in mind? What does he expect Jesus to do for him when both of them are dying on a cross? Does he really expect that Jesus will promise him a place in paradise? Perhaps we should take his words at face value. Jesus, remember me. Please don't forget about me. And if that's all that the penitent thief dared to hope for, then Jesus' answer illustrates the Bible promise that our God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Well, let's back up just a little bit. As the Roman soldiers lead Jesus toward Calvary, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And along the way, Jesus says to the women who are weeping and wailing over him, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, Weep for yourselves and for your children. This must have sounded strange to the two thieves who were on their way to Calvary to die. Jesus was more concerned about the daughters of Jerusalem than about himself. And even if he did not think about it much at first, Jesus' words must have echoed in the heart of the thief who eventually repented. And this is exactly what we pray for when we pray, Thy kingdom come. In the Catechism, Luther teaches us how this works. The kingdom of God comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his holy word and lead a godly life here in time and hereafter in eternity. That's what happened to the penitent thief. When we stop and take a closer look at this familiar story, we can see that this criminal came to believe God's holy word, which moved him to lead a godly life, although briefly, before Jesus ushered him into eternal joy. So how did this work? Well, everything depends on the power of God's word. 
the thief hears Jesus pray, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. While Jesus is praying to the Father, he's also preaching to both of the thieves. And to begin with, both of them join in mocking Jesus. But then one of them is moved to repent because the Holy Spirit works faith where and when it pleases him. But now how can we say that the penitent thief led a godly life, even briefly? Well, notice all the good works that he does while he's dying. One, he rebukes the other thief. Don't you fear God? Two, he confesses his own sin. We are getting what we deserve. Three, he defends Jesus. This man has done nothing wrong. Four, he prays to Jesus. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And five, he recognizes Jesus as a king even though he is crowned with thorns. Jesus' royal identity is evident only to the eyes of faith. Now, if ever there were a prime candidate for purgatory, wouldn't you think this penitent thief would be the one? But instead of purgatory, Jesus promises him paradise. Now, how many people can you name who are in heaven for sure because the Bible says so? Well, there's Enoch, Moses and Elijah, Abraham and Lazarus. This penitent thief is in some pretty good company. According to tradition, his name was Latronus. Doesn't sound like a Jewish name. We don't know if he was a Jew or not. And we don't know who taught him how to pray. But he prays, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And now what kind of a kingdom does he want to be remembered in? Well, the promise of the kingdom goes all the way back to King David. God promised David a son who would sit on his throne forever. And that's why the Jews often refer to the Messiah as son of David. After the Romans conquered the Jews and imposed oppressive taxes and laws, there were many Jews who hoped that the Messiah would raise an army and banish the hated Romans and reestablish the golden age of David and Solomon. But Jesus of Nazareth was neither a general nor a politician. He was a preacher. After the feeding of the 5,000, when they wanted to force him to become their king, he withdrew into the hills by himself. And when he was asked about paying taxes to Rome, he answered, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And yet, when they brought him to Pilate, the charge against him was he opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, the king. Of course, Jesus is not guilty on all three counts. But the word king got Pilate's attention. 
And so he asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Really? And Jesus replies, my kingdom is not of this world. And yet, Pilate writes, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, and has the notice posted over Jesus' head on the cross. Which raises the question, was the penitent thief able to read? Did he read that inscription while they were on the way to Calvary? Before it was even posted over Jesus' head? When the penitent thief prays to Jesus, both of them know it's not going to be long until Jesus is dead. Now just think about how this usually works. The death of a king brings mixed emotions as the official announcement is made, the king is dead, long live the king. This recently happened in Great Britain. How does King Charles feel? His mother's dead. He's the new king. First comes a funeral, then a coronation. Mixed emotions indeed. But it all sounds much different if the dead king is the king who will live and reign forever and ever. The king who is hanging on the cross will soon be dead, but he will rise again and he will never die again. And in fact, he will come on the clouds in power and great glory and raise all the dead and give eternal life to all believers. That's why Jesus says to you and to me, you will be with me in paradise. That's a promise. That's why Jesus died. So you can live forever. But as Jesus' battered and bloody body was lifted up on the cross, it was obvious that his kingdom was not of this world. His throne was the rough equivalent of an electric chair, and his head is crowned with thorns, and the inscription over his head is a humiliating joke, an insult directed both against Jesus and against his accusers. But even though the women who had followed Jesus from Galilee are shocked and confused and frightened, one dying man was enabled to see clearly that Jesus was a king. The dying thief prays to the dying king, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So what is the kingdom of God? Jesus promises the thief a place in paradise. Does that mean that we have to wait until we get to heaven before we can become citizens of God's kingdom? No. Let's go back to the familiar words of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, Jesus lives and reigns in heaven. And we pray in this petition that the kingdom will come to us here and now while we're still on earth. And Jesus explains how this works in the parables that are collected for us in Matthew chapter 13. Again and again, he declares, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like 
a pinch of yeast, like the tares among the wheat, like a net that is let down into the sea. And each of these parables seems to say that the kingdom comes in two stages. The first stage is not very impressive, but the second stage is surely coming. So the mustard seed is very small, but it will eventually become a huge tree where the birds will come and make their nests in the branches. A pinch of yeast doesn't look very powerful, but it'll work through the whole batch of dough. The tares and the wheat look very much alike at first, but they will be separated when the harvest is gathered in. First, the good fish and the bad fish are caught in the same net, but the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous. The two stages of the kingdom correspond to the two comings of Christ. His first advent is marked by weakness and humility and crucifixion. But he will surely come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And so we can confidently sing, the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. A royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to turn now to the second petition and we'll review the catechism together. Thy kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. And how does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his holy word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. A couple of brief uh, explanations before we pray, okay? Uh, there was a pastor, Don Olson, who used to serve at Trinity. His wife, Lu Luann, was for a while the secretary here at Peace. 
Many of you remember her. They had a son, Jonathan. Jonathan recently, suddenly, and unexpectedly died in an accident in the Dominican Republic where he was on vacation. So we've been asked to include the family in our prayers tonight. And then secondly, I heard from a, a member of the church I first served in Houston many years ago. He called today and said that he's going to be having heart surgery on Tuesday and asked that we would pray for him. His name is Peter Wells, so we'll include him. Let's rise and pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us such new and contrite hearts that we, lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. We pray for all pregnant women and nursing mothers and for their children, born and unborn. We pray for all fathers, that you will fill them with love for their families and the determination to take their parental responsibilities seriously. We pray for all the men and women in uniform who have volunteered to serve our country and keep us safe. Protect them from all danger and bring them safely home. We pray for all who struggle with addictions to alcohol and drugs, pornography and gambling, that you would set them free. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help them to accept the things they cannot change, give them courage to change the things they can, and give them wisdom to know the difference. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who face persecution or the threat of persecution simply because they confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Protect them from danger and turn the hearts of those who persecute them to repentance. We pray for the sick and the injured, for the lonely and the depressed, for those who are recovering after surgery, and for people who live with pain that never goes away. We pray for those who live with cancer and for all who are undergoing chemo and radiation treatments. And we pray especially for Peter Lells, that you will watch over him as he undergoes surgery next Tuesday Guide the thoughts and hands of his doctor and grant him a quick and complete recovery according to your gracious will. We pray for others who have medical needs. We pray especially for Cindy Knobloch's father, for Pastor Joe Arty, for Mark Baker, Tracy Lightfoot, Madison Bray, Janice Moravich, Jennifer Fisher, and Frank Peters. Provide for each of them according to what you know they need. And we pray for widows and widowers and orphans, and for all who are grieving for a loved one who has died. We pray especially for the family and friends of Jonathan Olson and for the family and friends of Jake Boucher. Comfort them by the power of your holy word and grant them that peace which the world cannot give. We also pray for all the people in Turkey and Syria who are recovering after the earthquakes. Please use this time to bring them the good news of what Jesus has done for them and draw them into your kingdom. And now we pause for a moment of silent prayer to bring you the names of others for whom we are individually concerned. Thank you for hearing us, dear Lord. As we ask for all these good things from your good hand, help us always to remember to do good for Jesus' sake. And now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now, having been strengthened and preserved in body and soul to life everlasting through the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of all of your sin. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you 
for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith, in body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. For the Lord is with you. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sin. And 
now may this true body and true blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Please rise. We pray, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Please be seated. Well, thank you, Kathy, for the music. Thank you, Buddy, for ushering. Thank you all for being here. I'm not aware of any announcements that need to be made. Is there one? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm up here. If you would please, if you haven't checked the, uh, the directory that's sitting on the coffee bar, if you'd please go ahead and check it and make sure all your info is correct. We are trying to get our 2023 uh, directory printed. And so thank you. Yes. Everybody hear that? Okay. If you're going to attend the the supper next Wednesday, they'd really like to get you to sign the sheet on the board so they know for sure that they'll have enough food. Okay. Anything else? 
Going once, going twice. Okay. Well, the Lord be with you.